going to read Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'm just going to read the very end of chapter 31 to introduce it. And Moses recited the words of this song from beginning to end in the hearing of the whole assembly of Israel. Listen, you heavens, and I will speak. Hear, you earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching fall like rain, and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock. His works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. They are corrupt, and not his children. To their shame, they are a warped and crooked generation. Is this the way you repay the Lord, you foolish and unwise people? Is he not your father, your creator, who made you and formed you? Remember the days of old. Consider the generations long past. Ask your father, and he will tell you, your elders, and they will explain to you. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when he divided all mankind, he set up boundaries for the peoples according to the number of the sons of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob his allotted inheritance. In a desert land he found them, in a barren, wa barren and howling waste he shielded them and cared for him. He guarded him as the apple of his eye, like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spreads its wings to catch them and carries them on its pinions. The Lord alone led him, no foreign god was with him. He made him ride on the heights of the land and fed him with the fruit of the fields. He nourished him with honey from the rock and with oil from the flinty crag, with curds and milk from herd and flock and with fattened lambs and goats, with choice rams of Bashan and the finest grains of wheat. You drank the foaming blood of the grape. Jeshurun grew fat and kicked, filled with food. They became heavy and sleek. They abandoned the God who made them and rejected the God, rock, their saviour. They made him jealous with their foreign gods and angered him with their detestable idols. They sacrificed to false gods which are not God, gods they had not known, gods that had recently appeared, gods your ancestors did not fear. You deserted the rock who fathered you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. The Lord saw this and rejected them because he was angered by his sons and daughters. I will hide my face from them, he said, and see what their end will be, for they are a perverse generation, children who are unfaithful. They made me jealous by what is no God and angered me with their worthless idols. I will make them envious by those who are not a people. I will make them angry by a nation that has no understanding, for a fire that will be kindled by my wrath. one that burns down to the realm of the dead below. It will devour the earth and its harvests and set on fire the foundations of the, fa of the mountains. I will heap calamities on them and expend my arrows against them. I will send wasting famine against them, consuming pestilence and deadly plague. I will send against them the fangs of wild beasts, the venom of vipers that glide in the dust. In the street the sword will make them childless. In their homes terror will reign. The young men and young women will perish, the infants and those with grey hair. I said I would scatter them and erase their name from human memory, but I dreaded the taunt of the enemy, lest the adversary misunderstand and say, Our hand has triumphed, the Lord has not done all this. They are a nation without sense, there is no discernment in them. If only they were wise and would understand this. And discern what their end will be. How could one man chase a thousand, or two put ten thousand to flight, unless their rock had sold them, unless the Lord had given them up? For their rock is not like our rock, as even our enemies concede. Their vine comes from the vine of Sodom and from the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are filled with poison and their clusters with bitterness. Their wine is the venom of serpents, the deadly poison of cobras. 
Have I not kept this in reserve and sealed it in my vaults? It is mine to avenge. I will repay in due time their foot will slip. Their day of disaster is near and their doom rushes upon them. The Lord will vindicate his people and relent concerning his servants. When he sees their strength is gone and no one is left, slave or free, he will say, Now where are their gods? The rock they took refuge in, the gods who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up to help you. Let them give you shelter. See now that I myself am he. There is no God besides me. I put to death and I bring to life. I have wounded and I will heal. And no one can deliver out of my hand. I lift my hand to heaven and solemnly swear, as surely as I live forever, when I sharpen my flashing sword and my hand grasps it in judgment. I will take vengeance on my adversaries and repay those who hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood, while my sword devours flesh and the blood of the slain and the captives, the heads of the enemy leaders. Rejoice, you nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants. He will take vengeance on his enemies and make atonement for his land and people. Moses came with Joshua, son of Nun, and spoke all the words of this song in the hearing of the people. When Moses had finished reciting all these words to all Israel, he said to them, Take to heart all the words I have solemnly declared to you this day, so that you may command your children to obey carefully all the words of this law. They are not just idle words for you, they are your life. By them you will live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. On that same day the Lord told Moses, Go up into the Abraham range to Mount Nebo in Moab, opposite Jericho and view Canaan, the land I am giving the Israelites as their own possession. There on the mountain that you have climbed you will die and be gathered to your people, just as your brother Aaron died on Mount Hor and was gathered to his people. This is because both of you broke faith with me in the presence of the Israelites at the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the desert of Zin, and because you did not uphold my holiness among the Israelites. Therefore you will see the land only from a distance. You will not enter the land I am giving to the people of Israel. Chapter 33 This is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, pronounced on the Israelites before his death. He said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned over them from Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came with myriads of holy ones from the south from his mountain slopes. Surely it is you who love the people. All the holy ones are in your hand. At your feet they will bow down, and from you receive instruction. The law that Moses gave us, the possession of the assembly of Jacob. He was king over Jeshurun, when the leaders of the people assembled along with the tribes of Israel. Let Reuben live and not die, nor his people be few. And this he said about Judah. Hear, Lord. The cry of Judah bringing him to his people. With his own hands he defends his cause. O oh, be his help against his foes. About Levi, he said, Your Thummim and Urim belong to your faithful servant. You tested him at Massa. You contended with him at the waters of Meribah. He said of his father and mother, I have no regard for them. He did not recognise his brothers or acknowledge his own children, but he watched over your word and guarded your covenant. He teaches your precepts to Jacob and your Lord to Israel. He offers incense before you and whole burnt offerings on your altar. Bless all his skills, Lord, and he be pleased with the works of his hands. Strike down those who rise against him, his foes, till they rise no more. About Benjamin, he said, Let the beloved of the Lord rest, rest secure in him, for he shields him all day long. And the one the Lord loves rests between his shoulders. About Joseph, he said, May the Lord bless his land with the precious dew from heaven above and with the deep waters that lie below. With the best sun brings forth and the finest moon can yield. With the choicest gifts of the ancient mountains and the fruitfulness of the everlasting hills. With the best gifts of the earth and its fullness and the favour of him who dwelt in the burning bush. Let all the, these rest on the head of Joseph, on the brow of the prince among his brothers. In majesty he is like a firstborn bull. 
He has horns of the horns of a wild ox. With them he will gore the nations, even those at the ends of the earth. Such are the ten thousands of Ephraim, such are the thousands of Manasseh. About Zebulun, he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out, and you, Issachar, in your tents. They will summon people to the mountain, and there offer the sacrifices of the righteous. They will feast on the abundance of the seas, on the treasures hidden in the sand. About Gad, he said, Blessed is he who enlarges Gad's domain. Gad lives there like a lion, tearing at arm or head. He chose the best land for himself. The leader's portion was kept for him. When the heads of the people assembled, he carried out the Lord's righteous will and his judgments concerning Israel. About Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's cub springing out of Bashan. About Naphtali, he said, Naphtali is abounding with the favour of the Lord and is full of his blessing. He will inherit southward to the lake. About Asher, he said, Most blessed sons of Asher is Most blessed of sons is Asher. Let him be favoured by his brothers. Let him bathe his feet in oil. The bolts of your gates will be iron and bronze, and your strength will equal your days. There is no one like the God of Jeshurun who rides across the heavens to help you and on the clouds of his majesty. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will drive out your enemies before you, saying, destroy them. So Israel will live in safety. Jacob will will dwell secure in a land of grain and new wine where the heavens drop dew. Blessed are you, Israel. Who is like you? A people saved by the Lord. He is your shield and helper and your glorious sword. Your enemies will cower before you and you will tread on their heights. Chapter 34 Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah, opposite Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev and the whole region of the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab, in the valley opposite Beth Peor. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on them. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all these signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his officials and to his whole land. No one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. Psalm 13 The Director of Music, a Psalm of David How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God, give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death and my enemy will say I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Luke chapter 13 Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. 
Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard and he went to look for fruit on it but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig round it and fertilise it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues and a man was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. And, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus called her, he called her forward. When, I'm sorry, I'll start that section again. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. When he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for eighteen long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. Then Jesus asked, What is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds perched in its branches. Again he asked, What shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 30 kilograms of flour until it worked all through the dough. Then Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, We ate and drank with you, but and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are the last who will be first and the first who will be last. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go and tell that fox that I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill all the prophet prophets, and stone those who sent you. How often I have longed to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord.